And I should be able to ping to that cloud now. There we go. Now for the interface, fast ethernet 00, zero which is connected to router 2. I'll go ahead and assign that IP address. It's got the 30-bit uh, subnet mask, so we're only allowed uh, two IP addresses for that particular network. So router 1 is going to be 1.1. And router two will be 1.2. .2. It's just uh, it's a good practice for point-to-point -point links like that to save IP address space. So not necessarily uh, required in a lab like this, but it's just good practice. And I'm going to set the duplex to full speed 100. Okay, and I'll go ahead and configure that interface on router two. same basic configuration I do here with all lab environments that I'm working in. I'm setting the logging to synchronous and no exact timeout. And for that interface, set the IP address. Do a no shut and hard code the duplex to full and speed to 100. I do want to achieve end-to-end -end, uh, reachability here, so if I if I try and ping from 192.168.2.1, that's not going to happen because I don't have any sort of routing enabled here to see that network. So on this router. I'm going to enable uh, EIGRP AS10 and I'm going to advertise network 1.0 with the wildcard mask of 3 so it just puts out that and that first subnet there and we do no auto summary now on router 1 I'm going to enable EIGRP on the same autonomous system for networks 1.0 and you can see that initial uh, adjacency is brought up there So I should see both networks now. There we go. You can see that the 192.168.2.0 network was learned via EIGRP. And I should be able to ping all the way across to that loopback that's configured. And there we go. Okay, so now that we have complete reachability here, let's go ahead and s configure this uh, router 1 for... Uh, SDM access which is going to be the router that we'll configure it for and uh, I'll just bring that up and and show you some of the basic stuff within the SDM here. So um, first I'm going to configure the a local username which would be Matt the privilege level of 15 and password Cisco. Next I'm going to set the IP domain name to say sec.bowlerccclabs.com I'm going to use HTTPS uh, and SSH for the communications here between my computer and the security device manager just uh, so we have a, a secure environment 
so I want to enable the HTTP and the secure server is not enabled by default so I'll go ahead and enable that and I'm going to turn off just the basic HTTP server. I will need to set the HTTP authentication and I'm going to set that to the local database. Next thing I need to do here is uh, generate some crypto keys so I will crypto key generates RSA and if you watch the uh, advanced telnet SSH security lab that I have out there you'll see that all this is uh, just standard in the SSH setup process. Next thing I want to do is set up the telnet lines to use the local database for login and transport input SSH and telnet is the last resort. So I'll exit out of there. <coughs> 